Good evening, everyone. It's Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us on this wonderful, blessed day. The beginning of the weekend is ahead of us. And we're going to start it off right with KPG Global's Friday Night Bible Study here with Minister Remy. And we just want to thank Apostle Simba and Ajias Baptist for this wonderful opportunity to be able to share the word of God with you all today. Before we get into the word, we just would like to go before the Father in reverence. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father God, I just wanna thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you so much for the wonderful weekend that we have ahead of us. And Lord, I just wanna lift up Minister Remy right now and ask that you just anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, please touch his mind, touch his heart, and touch his mouth as he delivers your word today. Father God, I also thank you in advance for just destroying any walls and any hindrances that may try to interfere with your word being put forth. But Lord, I thank you that we are victorious in you and that your word will come forth bold and strong. And I thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship together. And I pray that we all just receive something wonderful from you today. In your name, Lord Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. And shalom to everyone. Thank you for attending today's Bible study. And we are glad that you decided to join us here at KPG and Ajias for this wonderful Bible study. And, well, let us begin. Last week, we discussed the peace of God, how we have obtained something we did not deserve. Not only that, but how obtaining the justification by faith, we strengthen ourselves and rejoice in tribulations. For it produces perseverance, and perseverance produces experience, and experience hope. For as it says, hope does not put us to shame. We also discuss spiritual death and how all of us were born with this through our federal head, Adam. Though today we will take what we have learned from last week and through the scriptures, we will witness what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has given us through his death. But a quick recap. Much of what we have been going over in Romans we learned how depraved we are from chapter one. And in chapter two, Paul digs into the Jewish world and tells them that they are in the same boat as, as, the, as the Gentile world. Only they have the, the law and God can get very specific with their transgressions. And in chapter three, Paul brings up justification by faith through our Savior. And in chapter four, we learn the power and meaning behind our forefather, Abraham, and how God not only honors his covenant, he is in the soul-saving business. And not just that, Paul explains how Abraham shows us, the Gentiles and the people of Israel, how Abraham honored God and trusted God because of his justification by faith. Now, here we are in chapter 5, where it comes full circle. And how through all of this comes peace with God. And not just that, but how grace and the free gift comes to us, not through anything we could have done, but through believing in the Son whose name is above all names and repenting of our sins, that everlasting life and a new life falls to us who were filthy and undeserving. But let us go to chapter 5, and we will start at verse 10. And I'm reading from the King James Version. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ 
by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigns from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that has come, that was to come, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of, of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I like how Paul brings in full circle of Adam, our federal head, and how important it is for us to truly understand the purpose as to why we need to understand what we were being saved from. Yes, we are being saved from sin. That sin came into the world through one man who is our federal head. However, Jesus Christ also came into the world to give us life and to become our new Adam. For any who believes in the Son will, will grace and life and righteousness be, be bestowed upon them. For let's go, let us go back into 17 and 9 through 19. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall be made righteous. This shows the power of what none of us, even Adam, who was a perfect man, couldn't do. Only the God-man, Jesus Christ, the member of the Holy Godhead, could produce. I want us to go back to Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to go to verse 9. And the Lord called, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, 
Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, wherefore I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat of bread, till thou return to the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and dust shalt thou return. And then I want us to go to chapter 4, I mean Genesis chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Now, we went through all that in Genesis 3. And then we only went through one verse in Genesis 4. What was the purpose? The purpose was, is that sometimes we forget what transpired in chapter 3. How even perfect man and perfect woman still fall. They knew better. Not only did they knew better, Adam knew better. If he did not eat, we would not Jesus would not have been needed. But he did eat. Not only did he eat, I will even go upon to say this. He didn't disciple his wife correctly. Not only did he not disciple his wife correctly, but knowing that God has said he still eaten, and because of his disobedience, we were all be made sinners. Not only were we made sinners, sin is in our nature because of Adam. Don't believe me? We just read chapter four in verse eight. How did Cain know of how to kill? That is because of sin. That is the nature of sin. Because Adam didn't know of killing. He didn't learn it from his parents. It's because of that sin-like disobedient nature that was passed on from Adam. But it goes to show of how God leaves this record to show what he had to do in order for us to be with him again. So that there may be peace between us and God. But I want us to go 
to chapter 20 and 21 again in Romans 5. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto the eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. It shows, this shows us how the law is perfect, though we can't fulfill it due to our sin-like nature, a weakness, so only death comes to us because of it, because of what happened in the garden. However, Jesus fulfilled the law because he was the God-man, because he was born from a virgin birth, so he does not have the condition you and I were born with. Our Savior started from a clean slate like the first Adam. And because of the holy genius of our Savior, he fulfilled everything the first Adam couldn't. Jesus, who knew no sin and had no sin, died on the cross for us wretches who were at war with him, who spat on him, cursed him, committed horrendous acts, who worshipped other false gods, who even denied him three times. But because he was the perfect propitiation to quench the Most High's wrath, we are saved because of his righteousness. His grace and his love abounds to all who believe. And because of him, all the sin that is in this world if any who believes in the son that, that, that is a sinner, his grace and his love and his sacrifice and his blood covers all sin. It gives us a new birth, a new life. It gives us the peace that we never knew that not all of us were striving for in our foolish wickedness. All of us who foolishly cling onto books that say five steps to a happy life, mm -hmm. five steps to get your finances right, five steps into a healthy marriage, five steps on how to discipline your children correctly, We cling on to foolishness when peace and wisdom is found in his gospel and through the blood of his only begotten son. Amen. But I want us to go to Luke 22 because there's one thing I want us all to see and I want us all to remember. And we're going to start at verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him and being in an agony. He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And I want us to stop there. I want you to imagine the amount of agony that one has to be in. That droplets and droplets of blood are flowing out of your pores. I want 
want us to take a long thought about that. He was sweating blood. Our Savior was in agony over what was going to come next. Because the full weight of the wrath of God that should have been for us was going to fall on him. Jesus didn't need the cross. He knew no sin and was innocent. But he followed the will of the Father. And through his love for the Father and for the world, he went to the cross for our sake. That is why he is the perfect propitiation between us and the Father. Remember what he went through. Remember that though he was in agony, he chose to honor his Father, to honor the covenant, and to honor and save those who were ungodly and spat upon him. He wanted to save me. He wants to save you. He wanted to save everyone who rejected him. But we who heard the gospel, heard his truth, and believed in him and fell to our knees in repentance, he has saved us. Even though we deserve every bit of the Most High's wrath, he is the bridge and he saved us because we believed in him and we repent repented of our sins and decided to go all in to his gospel his truth and beloved that is the peace of god For one way we came into this world, and there was only one way to get out of it, through him. For none can go to the Father but through him, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. Meditate on this, beloved. And I encourage all to fully read and meditate on chapter 5. To fully read and meditate from Genesis 3 to Genesis 4 and Luke 22 on those verses to remember what has came and what came to pass. And I give it to my wife who will tell of events that are coming up in KPG. And she will, after that, close us. Before I, before I give out the events and everything, I just want to go before the Lord in prayer. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for the reminder of how you sent your son, Yeshua, to do what he did on the cross for conquering death, hell, and the grave for us and for being the bridge to get back to you, Lord God, to be back in peace with you and to receive your peace, which transcends all understanding. Thank you so much for that, Lord God. And I just thank you for this time that we have spent together today. It's in Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. And for those that have any prayer requests or would like more information in regards to how to be a part of this ministry and to know about our upcoming events like tomorrow, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that we'll be having PAGA service. And you can submit both the prayer requests and tune in tomorrow. 
via kpgglobal.org. Again, that's K P as in Peter, G global.org. You may also tune in for replays of our Paga services and Bible studies via the YouTube channel, KPG Global. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a blessed weekend. Oh, sorry. I also would like to add that we have Pillars of Victory every second and fourth Thursday of the month. And that is at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you may get more information on it via the website. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a blessed weekend.